Hey, Miles. How we doing? Um, since you started 2017, you've gone through coaching changes, possible transfer questions. Uh, you finally get your shot, and you have to deal with COVID-19. Can you just kind of go back with us a little on how this whole experience has been the last three years, or six months for you? Yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah, starting with 2017 and with the coaching change, uh, you know, I mean, that's bound to happen in this business. Uh, you know, I committed under Les and Coach Cameron, and then they, they end up getting fired, coming in with Coach Canada, um, and then a year later he's gone, and then, you know, Coach Insmere comes in and brings his offense, and then Coach Brady brings his offense, and then here we are, and then COVID gets in the way, you know, but all that's just going to prepare me to, to be a better person in the end and to be stronger. Um, and without adversity, I don't think, you know, I'd be as strong as I am today. So it's just another uh, speed bump in the road. Um, but I'm more than capable and confident that we can all get through it. Hey, Miles. Um, you know, I, I have kind of a question centered around, you know, the chemistry with you and Jamar and guys like that. You guys have been throwing now for a couple weeks. I guess kind of where are you in that chemistry development process with those guys and just kind of what do you think the next month is going to mean as far as you guys locking in as a you know, cohesive unit? Yeah, I think the next next month is going to be huge just because, I mean, this is the first time that we've been able to go against a defense uh, since spring ball. Um, and so just – you know, we've been we've been working and we've been throwing for a long time now since I mean since quarantine um, and you know now that we're able to go against the defense and actually be with live bullets um, it's you know we're, we're at a next level now and so I think that these this next month and these next few weeks are going to be really important for us just to, to continue to get our timing down and, and to continue to gel with each other. Hey, Miles, uh, you mentioned spring ball being the last time you guys really got to, to throw against the defense. With spring ball being canceled, did you kind of put more on yourself to, to kind of go out there and lift the weights and, and try to find ways to, to be productive and uh, you know get yourself ready for the season? A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, a lot of guys, I'm sure, went home and probably just took the, the 11 weeks that we were off. You know, they probably just took those weeks off, you know, but I know I, personally and as, and as a team, uh, I know that we took advantage of those 11 weeks, you know, even though we weren't able to be with each other every day. Um, I know that our strength staff made us send in videos and things like that to make sure that we weren't staying on top of our strength and conditioning. Um, and I know personally, you know, I was doing everything in my power each and every day to make sure I was getting better. Hey, Miles, I was wondering with how long you've spent with Steve Ensmeyer um, from the time you got here to now, how much does that help y'all's relationship as you transition to the starter? It helps a lot. I mean, he's been here since day one with me. Um, and like I've said before, you know, he's – it's really nice because he's played the position and he's played it here. You know, so when, when he gives advice and when he's, when he's coaching us, like it's, it's coming from a first-hand guy who's been through it. He's been through it here. Um, and so just to be able to take that from him and run with it has been really helpful. And being here, this is now year four with him and I together, pretty much in the same room, has is, is also been really nice. Yeah, Miles, this is Ron Higgins with Tiger Rag. Uh, talk about working with William Shanahan, the new center. What, what's that been like? It's been awesome. He is one heck of a player, very smart, very intelligent. Um, He's picked up the offense and he's running with it, and uh, we are all excited uh, to have him on board. Hey, Miles, what's well, going from the Advocate? Usually, by the end of preseason camp, uh, you know, what would it be a couple of weeks ago, I'm talking about how eager you are to play somebody else. I thought I was going to have to wait a lot longer. What challenges are there, if any? With an extended preseason camp this year, having to wait so much more time before you actually play that opponent. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really see there being, you know, many challenges ahead of us just because with it being extended, that gives us more time to get better each and every day. It gives us more practice time. Um, and especially with all the lost time that we had in the spring and leading up to this point, um, I feel like as we can, we need, we need as much time as we can just, be, just to make up for what we've lost. So I don't see any challenges being in, ahead of us. Hey, Miles, uh, Ed O'Gara 
Sean said yesterday, y'all been through installation five times. Uh, you know, throughout the off season, how take me through how you go through that installation or on on your own time. Like, I mean, are you looking through an iPad? Like, how how do you go through this, and how um, how much do you feel you you know this offense at this point? If you can kind of provide some details on that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I know the offense really well at this point, um, and I mean, it all really started. I guess to go back, going back to quarantine, um, I know we would Zoom every morning at 8 o'clock and we would just keep reinstalling the offense, you know, and, and then when we got back in June, we clicked the restart button and we just literally flipped the page back to day one. And then when we started camp, we clicked the restart button again. So, I mean, we're, we, this is, I couldn't tell you, I mean, I guess you said, what, five times? I, I forgot. I lost track of how many times we've installed the offense now. Uh, but if anything, it's a good thing, you know, for our guys to, to, to keep hearing the terminology and to keep seeing everything. Uh, I feel like it definitely is going to benefit us. Hey, Miles, uh, I know the question you've been getting for four years is about putting on weight, right? <laughs> uh, since you got to LSU, and it looks like you've really built yourself up there. W what was your weight when you came in? What do you weigh now? And I know there were some humorous stories along the way about you know, eat as much as you can, go to Raising Cane's at midnight, you know, all those kind of different things that kind of led you to this point. Yeah, I mean, when I first got here freshman year, I was, I don't know, I was probably 175. Um, and now I'm, I'm about like from 218 to 220. I've been ranging from 218 to 220. Um, and it's been, up until this point, it's been difficult. Now I've, I feel like I've kind of flattened my, my curve out a little bit, and I've been pretty consistent. Uh, I think I hit, I hit like 221 in, during quarantine, and then when I got back to LSU in, in June, and I was still around 220, that's when I kind of took a deep breath and was like, all right, I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this. But I still continue to eat healthy and, and, and stay strong in the weight room. Again, thought we had a moratorium on weight questions, but uh, Jacques broke that. Anyway, uh, hey, Miles, uh, I know that, that uh, other schools are having problems right now with the student body. Um, talk about this, how you're probably going to another extreme. You, you live by yourself. You're taking online classes. Are you just pretty much going from your apartment to the facility and back to make sure there's little interaction with anybody outside your, your football bubble? 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, like you said, I do live by myself. Um, which is nice in terms of you know going through all this stuff right now. Um, but yeah, when I when I get done with football, I'm going back to my apartment. I'm eating dinner. I'm watching film. I'm studying. Um, and then other than that, I mean, I'm waking up and I'm going right back to football. You know, and, and fortunately, I do have online classes, so I won't have to you know be on campus as much, uh, which is nice. But yeah, it, it has been nice not having to worry as much about being exposed to to the outside community. Associated Press, could you estimate how many times in the last three years did somebody in football or someone who has your ear or someone close to you um, just bring up the conversation about whether it would be wise or not to consider a transfer? And what would you say were the overriding factors in, in keeping you here? It's it's been talked about um, probably a good bit, and I mean I've I've thought about it. I wouldn't say a lot, but I mean, it's definitely crossed my mind in previous years. And, you know, like I've said before, there's a reason I came here and I feel very confident in my decision for staying here. Um, you know, I, when I came in, I, I knew that I was going to have to, to fight for a starting position and I'm still fighting, you know, and I, and I have to earn that position. But I wasn't going to let adversity or any challenges get in the way and make me crumble. You know, I was going to stay strong and uh, bite the bullet and, and fight each day and, until I wanted um, and, and earned you know, what I deserve. And so here I am today, um, you know, I'm still fighting each and every day to, to earn that position. Um, but you know, every morning I wake up and, and I tell myself just win the day and, and be the best I can. Like, okay, there's some autonomy there to say, 
hey, these are plays I'm comfortable with and these are not so comfortable with. Uh, everyone says it's pretty much the same offense, but just talk about you and the playbook and, and trying to tailor it to what you feel you do best. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel really, really, really comfortable with the whole playbook, and I know that sounds crazy, um, but, I mean, this playbook reminds me so much of what I did in high school um, in terms of, you know, RPOs and, and having that run pass option and, and throwing the ball downfield and, you know, to just really put the ball in our playmakers' hands and let them go make plays is, is the biggest thing. Um, so I've, I've felt very comfortable up until this point um, with, with the playbook and where we stand and, and where we're headed. Hey, this is uh, Mark Clements with 225 Magazine. Um, we heard Joe a lot last year, and even now in Cincinnati, he's had quotes come out about how close he wants to be with his offensive line and have a good rapport with those guys. How have you tried to continue that, and um, you know, especially with all the challenges of this offseason, being remote and all that kind of stuff, and kind of the fluidity with that group, but how have you tried to continue that relationship you built? Yeah, those, uh, those guys better be my best friends. <laughs> but no, I, uh, no I've... I feel really close with our offensive line. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys are in the same class as I am, and we all came in together. You know, Ed, Austin, I know Sadiq, uh, you know, we lost him last year. But, you know, those guys, um, you know, those, those, those have to be my best friends, and they are. You know, just uh, I have to depend on them like they have to depend on me. And so, you know, just to carry on with, with taking care of them and, and making sure that whatever they need, you know, is, is taken care of. Um, but I. Like, like I've said, I mean, I, I have a really good relationship with them, and, and they have a really good relationship with me. Uh, hey, Miles, uh, I was wondering if you have any Eric Gilbert stories uh, and what it's like to have a 6'5", 255-pound receiver type be your tight end. Yeah, I mean, just having him out there is, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, he, he, he runs like a receiver. But, you know, we have – obviously, he's, he has the body type of a tight end. Um, and I don't think he's missed a single pass since we started camp. Um, you know, just – he's an outstanding athlete. And we are very, very, very grateful to have him on the roster. Yeah, Miles, this is Ron Higgins again. Uh, we've seen videos of you already practice uh, being very vocal as a vocal leader, how difficult is it to kind of get that back after you, in the first few, year, few years here, you have to kind of defer, you know, how difficult is it to kind of become that vocal leader again that you were in high school? You know, I didn't think it was that difficult just because, you know, since I've been here, um, you know, I've been the leader that I am. And um, yeah, I know Joe came in and, you know, he took over that responsibility, but that doesn't mean I, I stopped being a leader. You know, I, uh, I led in, in everything that I did, whether it was scout team or, or just making sure that our team was ready to play on Saturday. You know, I was leading in no matter what I did on and off the field. So it really just carried over. Um, and I just stepped into the shoes that, that I've been waiting for this whole time. We'll go with Brooks for the final question. Uh, Miles, you were talking a little bit about your uh, off season. And, I mean, we were seeing uh, stuff, videos of you lifting tree trunks and chainsaw stories. I mean, you seem like a guy that, you know, when given a lot of time, you just don't seem like you can sit still very much. Yeah, I I mean, even my parents can say that. Anybody in my family could tell you that I I just, I hate sitting still. I mean, I, I want to be doing something, you know, whether it's outside, inside. Uh, I just, I feel like I'm just a, a hands-on guy um, who ultimately at the end of the day just wants to get better and be the best version of myself.